Welcome to the Pulsar configuration and setup video. You might be thinking, finally, we're installing Pulsar. And you're right. Um, even though Pulsar needs all those other services like Bookkeeper and Zookeeper, we are finally getting to Pulsar itself. So the first thing we're going to do is edit the uh, broker.com, which is the Pulsar configuration file. Okay, so going to, um, going to the top of each um, each broker config file, we're going to fill in the Zookeeper servers. Okay, these are those three servers we made earlier. Configuration servers are the same as Zookeeper servers. You might remember when we um, initialized the cluster data and that's uh, referring to a lot of these configs we're doing now. So broker server port TLS. We're not using TLS in this demo, but um, in later tutorials, we will get to setting up TLS. So this is a, supposed to be a good baseline. So same thing as with, with the web, web service port. Find address 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Uh, basically just binds to every IP that's available. All right, now we're going to update the cluster name. Again, this is going to be the same cluster name as we did in the the, uh, the metadata that we uploaded to, to Zookeeper. Great. So this client, um, we're updating the client.com file. This is an important file to have correct, have set up correctly because the Pulsar admin tool uses this file. So I hope you noticed, hope you can see that each web service URL has the uh, specific number of each VM, so Pulsar training 01, 02, and 03, respectively. Now we're going to create our service file for Pulsar. I'm copying and pasting this in. It's pretty simple. The description is just a friendly name, so we can name that whatever we want it to be. All right, now we're doing a daemon reload again to update system CTL to, to uh, pull in that new service file, and we're starting Pulsar. <laughs> 